wish with all my heart I was a Pinterest mum who takes genuine pleasure in creating, I don't know, what do people do? Make little sandwiches that look like sheep and, you know, all of that lunchbox, bento box stuff. It it doesn't work like that in our household. To be truthful, I probably could be putting a lot more time, research and energy into what the kids are eating at school, but I'm probably not alone in that. What we do need, though, is a bit of expert advice about what should be in there, about nutrition. So registered dietitian Ahat Sajani is with us today. Um, she's at Valiant Hospital and is happy to take some questions as well. We've already had a number on uh, some specific situations. So please get in touch if you're worried about the nutrition that your kids are having or indeed not having. Um, Ahat, thank you for being with us today. Really do appreciate your time. And I'm sure it's a busy time. Um, I think... My kids' diets have gone absolutely haywire over the summer. There's been no structure, no routine, and uh, rarely a fruit or vegetable. So you might be getting some questions from me as well. (laughs) So can can we talk about what what nutritionally we should be looking to include in a lunchbox and why nutrition for kids, especially in the middle of the day, is so important? Thanks so much for having me, Helen. You're welcome. Um, So... I think more than what should be in, included in a lunchbox, what, what's more important is the balance of the foods. So I'm sure, you know, when it comes to adults, we always talk about combined protein with carbohydrate, make sure you have all the vegetables on the plate. And that gets t- very difficult to do in a lunchbox situation. But we need to make sure the kids are well fueled so they have proper brain function, they have energy throughout the day and stable energy, and they don't experience an energy slump. The last thing you want is your child coming back home from school completely drained and you know acting like they could eat everything that's Mm. in the house so that's that's the one thing you want to prevent the only way to do that is to prevent any sugar spikes in the middle of the day so we don't want anything with too much carbohydrate we don't want anything with too much added sugar we don't want anything sweet at any point during the day Now, I'm not saying that we don't need carbohydrate. We just don't want carbohydrate focused meals. So, for example, a lot of the times we're making oatmeal, you know, thinking it's a very healthy breakfast and there's nothing else in the oatmeal except the oats and maybe some milk or some water. And that's where the issue lies. Um, that's in kids, in adults. So we don't want a carbohydrate-focused meal. Okay. Let's talk about some good options then. For, you really worried me <laughs> by talking about nothing sweet because I'm thinking, yeah, stick a yogurt in there and that's what they've been having <laughs> since they were little. And I know I know, you're not going to say yogurt's a bad thing, but there is no, no chance on this planet that my kids would go, Oh, thanks, Mum. I love just a natural Greek yogurt. They would, they'd throw it back in my face. So I'm thinking about like trans, how to transition. But let's let's talk about some main meal ideas because, as you say, growing kids, running around, we don't want that energy slump. What what would you like to see as I guess the focus of a lunchbox? Okay, so the focus we need to have three major things in a lunchbox. One is a protein source. One is any kind of fiber source. So that would be majority of the times vegetables. And then the last thing we want is a whole grain carbohydrate. Um, So, for example, if you put these three together, what you could do is you could get a whole grain pasta with if you're not vegetarian, some chicken in it. If you're vegetarian, maybe some tofu in it Um, and then plenty of vegetables to be able to bring that all in together. Uh, Pasta is a very child friendly food as well. So that ties into a lot of things. It does take a little bit of prep. Um, So you do need to prep this either early in the morning if you have the time. A lot of people don't. uh, But the previous night can do as well. No problem. But the three things are very important. Uh, When we talk about the balance of how much of the vegetables, you know, you could be putting one stem of broccoli and saying there was vegetables. So. Ideally, in an ideal situation, what you do want is you want to have equal carbohydrate, equal vegetables. So if you're putting one cup of pasta, you want to put one cup of vegetables to kind of balance that out. I've got, I need to come and see you. I really do. Because we've been known to sling a jam sandwich in a lunchbox and send them on their way. Leonie says, any thoughts about hot food that kids would like? Couscous is too messy and we're running out of pasta ideas. I haven't seen some really good lunchboxes actually this year about keeping food hot. Um, and uh, I know... I know it is warm out there, but air-conditioned classrooms are real. And I do think there's a, definitely a good place for, for hot food for lunches. How can you help Leonie out? So 
I think um, finding hot food and then finding school lunches and then finding something that the child likes, it's, you know, very fine balance that you need to balance. So some ideas that I can think of is possibly making, you know, your own chicken nuggets, um, baking them instead of frying them, of course, but not buying the frozen kinds, maybe some sweet potato fries with that. Um kind of keep things exciting because you don't want to come back and see that you know like you said Helen the lunchbox is lunchbox is completely untouched um so that could be an idea a uh, lentil chili if your child is slightly older and they would probably enjoy that is another idea for older children um another thing i can think of is you can probably make like uh burger patties from whatever kind of protein source you like, maybe chicken, maybe another meat source, uh, tofu if you're vegetarian, uh, or even lentils with some quinoa in it, um, some chopped up veggies, bake them, they do stay pretty warm. Uh, you can add a sauce on top of that. So those are a couple of options that if you want to move away from the pasta. Uh, you could also do quesadillas in whole grain Ooh. tortillas with a protein source, with vegetable source, and then maybe some salsa with it if Sounds your child likes great. that. Great. Thank Thank you for that. Um, there's no name on this message. And as I always say, you don't need to put your name on if you'd rather not. Um, anonymous asking, our son is eight and has visibly gained weight over the summer. Usual mix of holiday food and fewer sporting activities. I don't like weighing the kids, but wondered if I should to get an idea of his BMI. Great question. Um, thank you for that. And thank you for raising. I think, um, as I said earlier, on my kids' diet habits have gone completely out of the window over the summer. And I'm looking forward to a bit more routine on the food front and definitely a few more activities and get them back into into the swing of things. Um, how do you feel about weighing kids? And is BMI chart an accurate way of judging where they should be? Um, I don't think it's accurate and I don't think we should be doing it on a daily basis. So a BMI for us um, is just, you know, just for us as healthcare professionals to get an idea of where you lie on the scale. Uh, I don't think it's a measure of success or any of the things that we did use weighing scale in the past for. So I don't think you need to weigh your child unless, um, you know, after things go back to normal, you're a little bit more in a routine. They are physically active and everything goes back to normal. If things don't stabilize after that, give it a couple of months, then maybe you could weigh them and see, uh, visit a professional and see what can be done in that situation but as of now I don't think it's cause for concern because it does from what you're telling me it's relating back to a little bit of holiday weight gain and routine changes so I don't think it should be an issue. Thank you for that um, and for us I really hope you're going to say something favourable because I went to the cinema the other night and mindlessly ate about a litre of popcorn. For us saying thoughts on popcorn as a snack please. Kids love it. Has it got any nutritional value? Is there any way you can make it um a bit so-called better or do you rate it absolutely so it can be a healthy snack i wouldn't say it's always a healthy snack um the cinema popcorn unfortunately not because there's a lot of oil butter salt in it but when you do want to make it a healthy snack i would say combine it with something that does have a little bit of protein because again going back to my point of we don't want to carbohydrate load and carbohydrates popcorn is only carbohydrate so maybe combining it with some nuts making it a trail mix out of it or just eating something that has protein on the side uh, with the popcorn can make it a lot healthier um, also, don't add in too much oil, butter or salt to be able to make that popcorn. The lesser, the better. And always choose organic popcorn when possible. Thank you for that. Last question. Pinterest is um, something I wish I had an interest or indeed a talent at. And there's endless pages and photos of the most beautiful, you know, little bento boxes and sandwiches cut out in shapes and these little, you know, snack pickers and does it matter how pretty our kids' food is? Can it be helpful or is it just a big old waste of time? So I think it depends on your child. Um, if your child responds well to food that looks pretty or plated, then yes, it does make a difference. But there are a lot of children who don't respond too well to that. I don't think it makes much of a difference to them. 
A lot of the times, more often than not, it does make a difference. Uh, I would say experiment. See what your child responds to well. See um, what's more likely to come back untouched. And if both are the same, then it doesn't really matter. And last question to you. When is it time to come and see a dietitian? Um, we know we've had a few concerned parents. And I've, as I said, I'm certainly in that group after a summer of total indulgence. When is it time to bring in the experts and really get a handle on our children's health on the food front? So uh, I think right about now would be a very good time to kind of start off the semester very well. Uh, Before the holidays, again, it gets a little bit tough and then the holidays are very soon. So um, you're not very able to implement change, if that makes sense. So I think now would be a good time or anywhere absolutely any time that you're struggling is always a good time and when you're ready to make change but um, right about now not before the holidays not exactly after the holidays thank you for that really appreciate it and as i said you can find that at valiant hospital um interesting here from sahel saying yes i agree with not weighing children or weighing yourself with respect to weight loss as a fitness ambassador and personal trainer i encourage people to look at body composition not weight Interesting indeed. And as I said, if you are looking for some expert advice, you can find um, them over at Valiant. This is Farmer's Kitchen on Dubai Eye 103.8. With Spinneys. Eat well, live well.